thanks guys for joining us. This is actually for all of you. Just curious uh, what it's like to kind of be back in Chapel Hill and uh, how you guys have, have handled the pandemic, um, how you've managed workouts and what it's like to, to be back. Bo, why don't you go ahead and start? Yeah, um, I mean, it's just awesome being able to be back, um, get back on campus after being gone for about three months. I mean, it was crazy leaving campus because, I mean, I left for spring break thinking I was going to be back in a week and going right into spring ball. And then one thing turned into another, and then we're gone for three months. And then so finally coming back, it feels great. Um, just handling everything one day at a time. I think Coach Hess and uh, Luke Ross, our training, our training staff and our strength staff, have a really good regiment for us right now. So we're just uh, following what our instructions are and just taking it day by day, like I said. So, I mean, it's been really fun, and it's good to be back around a bunch of the guys on the team. Daz, if you want to unmute and follow up. Like Bo said, it's fun to be back around the team, fun to be back around the guys. You know, we just all enjoying being back together right now, trying to make up for the missed time, really, and get back to work. Yanni? Yeah, it's, it's awesome, you know, coming back. We always, you know, we, we stick together and we, you know, we preach to each other every day. We, we try to stay safe and just to have fun and work out with the team, we all can show that competitiveness that, that we have missed like for the past three months or so. But it's always glad to be back working with these boys. Anything more, Greg? No, I'm good. All right, we'll go to Andrew Jones. Andrew, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hold on a second, Andrew. For some reason, you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Figure that out, Andrew, and we'll come back to you. I'll go off and pop back on. We can get you taken care of. Jonathan, you're up. What's up, fellas? Um, my question is, you know, I guess considering, you know, top three wide receivers or top four wide receivers are coming back, I'm sure that there was excitement, you know, there. But I guess what has it been like um, uh, to know that there's uncertainty surrounding the coronavirus? Um, and, you know, what level of concern have you all had? Two different questions. We'll just keep that order. Go ahead, Bo. Um, I mean, as far as the uncertainty goes, I mean, especially like me and Daz, I know being like a senior, this is our last year. This is like our last opportunity and stuff. So there's definitely some nervousness around it. But like I said earlier, I mean, like there's only one thing you can do right now in a situation like this, and it's take it one day at a time. So that's what we've been trying to do. Um, we're focused on uh, working towards uh, knowing that right now the opportunity to have, a, have the season is still there. So that's what we're working towards. And like I said, just taking it one day at a time and really – trying to focus on, uh, on one opportunity at a time. So hopefully everything um, goes well, like leading into the season. And uh, I mean, like our guys, are, all the guys on the team right now are taking the coronavirus uh, precautions very seriously. So um, we're, we're trying to stay healthy and do the right thing so that we can get in there and play this, uh, play this year. Like you said, um, we, definitely, we definitely feel some nervousness about not being able to play, but like he said, we can't control it, so we're just gonna keep working. We know, we know something's gonna happen, something's gonna shake for us eventually. So, you know, we're just gonna keep working until our time comes. Yami? Uh, of course, with all that is going on, you know, we have to be aware. Uh, we follow the precautions and thing, but at some points, you have to, you know, put it to the side. To where when we're working out, like, oh, we can't worry about it because we have to get better. But then at the same time, after when we're out, you know, away from football, you know, it's a it's a consideration that we have to take. And we really have to watch what we do outside of football when we're not, you know, with the team. But it's a little it's, it can get a little nervous, but at the end of the day, you just have to focus on one goal. Can I ask Diami a, a follow up question? Hold on a second, uh Jonathan. Yami, if you can. Put your lift your phone up a little bit so that your head's in the deal instead of off. Oh, just trying to frame you up a little bit. There you go. That works. All right. That sits. You look good. 
Oh, I, I guess. Okay. Yeah, um, go ahead. So, Diami, and then Daz, if you, if you want to, you know, chime in after this, you can too. But, Diami, I, you know, I just want to ask you, you know, you, you posted a, a post, you know, after things were happening with George Floyd and, you know, you wonder how, how people view you outside the uniform. You know, that's for real. So, you know, I'm just wondering, what did you think about the comments? You know, what, what, what was your mindset in the, in the, in the post? What, and, and what did you think about the response after that? So the initial, like, the initial post was, uh, you know, you're right, you know, it was just a lot, a whole lot of stuff on it, you know, with the George Floyd and then, so you, you know, it's people who really don't care, you know what I'm saying? So when I made the post, like, it seemed like when I'm playing football, like, all of that is gone, that at the same time, that's the only time somebody, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, outside, you know, even if it's not on Saturday, you know, some people, you know, look at you sideways right. still, even though you're not in uniform. So, and with the comments, it's, it didn't phase me, but I I really took it in. I thought about everybody commenting. I seen most of it. It was a lot. I seen most of them, but some of them didn't phase me. Some of them did, only because it's their opinion. Some of them, some of them you can take an opinion and reflect on it, like, okay, I see this side, or why, why they're saying it and why they do the things that they do. But at the same time, it's just, you know, knowledge that you can take in from it. But the initial post was really, you know, if any other player was feeling like me, then, you know, we could just come together and try to say, say something and make a change. Appreciate you, man. Mm -hmm. I was saying is, I was agreeing exactly what you were saying. But like you said, um, if we were to start playing football today, we wouldn't even be in this interview right now. Just now I'm saying, who would really care? Who would really care if we really start playing? And that's all I was saying. I was really agreeing with what he was saying. Appreciate you. Yeah, I'm going to let Jonathan go. You good, Jonathan? I am. Thank you very much. Okay. Todd, I see you raising your hand. We'll get to you. We got Mike next. Mike, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, this is for all the guys. Um, Sam's talking about being a little bit leaner this year, and obviously you guys need a you guys need an arm to get you guys the football in terms of the pass game. But what is what is Sam's body transition and what he's going for? How does that affect you guys uh, in, in terms of the pass game? I mean, do you expect him to be maybe tucking and running a little bit more, and that takes away some catches from you guys, or or does it matter? Is it all just a function of the offense? Uh, I'd say that it's uh, mostly just a function of the offense. I mean, last year, uh, we definitely wanted Sam to be a little bit more mobile than he was, but we had to take some some caution around him last year, especially. But this year, we're, uh, I mean, Sam, me and Daz were just joking about it yesterday because we, were, we, were, we had a workout uh, last night over at the indoor, and we were looking at Sam, and we were like, hey, like, Sam's looking a little bit bigger, <laughs> like, a little bit bigger this year. Like, he came back from quarantine looking a little bit swole. So, I mean, he's been working He's been working hard, and he's looking good. Um, but uh, that doesn't take anything away from us. I mean, he's he's going to be out there making and extending plays the way that he always does, and he's going to get the ball to us as, as much as he can when he can. Daz, you want to chime in? Yeah, like you said, I think he, he's just trying to evolve. He's just trying to evolve this game. You know, Sam's going to do what he does. He just trying to evolve. He's probably just trying to add a little more tools to the bag. I know he's gonna he gonna do what he do. He's gonna get us the ball, and we're gonna ball regardless. Diami. Yeah, I guess Sam wants to get faster. You know, <laughs> add a little something to it, so get a little bit more mobile. But it, it doesn't take any way, anything away from us. You know, we just can make plays when you know when it's time for us to make plays. And whatever he does. We're running through him, and we're running through the offense. You good, Mike? Yes, sir. Thank you. Todd, we'll come to you. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Hey, this, this is for Bo. Uh, Bo, those of us on TV, we keep clips of you guys when we shoot games, you know, the 10-yard outs, 15-yard plays or whatever. I've got five clips of you. Four of them are for touchdowns. I mean, what, what is it with you? You seem to have a knack for finding the end zone. Where does that come from? You're just being competitive uh, when the ball's in the air. Um, I, I take pride in like making competitive catches and stuff. So uh, it's something that I work on during practice and uh, after practices and stuff. And so um, 
just when, whenever the opportunity is given to you, I mean, you just got to make the most of it. I think uh, all the receivers on our team can attest to that. Uh, I mean, when, the, when you turn around and you see the ball coming your way, I mean, like there's only one thing like going through your head and, and that's making sure that you come down with it. So just keeping that competitive nature like really helps uh, when keeping that same mindset whenever uh, I'm in the game. Also, Jeremy, while I got a chance, can, can all of them talk about the, the uh, how they feel about, you know, being possibly portrayed as the, the best wide receiver group in the nation? Just each of them touch on that. Do they think that's the case? And, and if so, you know, why do they think that? We'll run through three. Go ahead, Bill. Um, I mean, shoot, I've, I've thought that we've had the best receiver course since I got here. <laughs> I mean, like just being around these guys the way – um, that we've always worked around each other and stuff with with each other and knowing the stuff that we've gone through just to get to this moment to where people are actually like starting to talk about it that way I mean it feels good and it gives you some confidence but um I mean we, we've been saying that we uh, we're at that top spot for for a long time I mean the numbers definitely didn't show um, when they needed to but uh, I mean we're starting to get to where we want to be and um, people are starting to take notice so it feels good Dad. Um, like I definitely think we the best receiver core. And why? Because we got Bo, Bo, Charles. He, he gonna get the jump balls for us on that. We need them. Then we got Miami, Miami. He he do it all type guy. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he got a little shift in this too. And then we got, then we got, we got me, we got me in the slot. You know what I'm saying? I, I can do it all too. I can do what it do. And then then we got the backup. We got we got other people on the roster, and they who also do it. Antoine Green. We got people like that. We got Josh Downs, freshman came in. We got another freshman, Stephen Gosnell. Gosnell gonna be a problem. And that's all I got to say right now. I ain't gonna say <laughs> <laughs> Deami, your thoughts? Yeah, I I say we we, we do have the best receiver court, uh, you know, across the nation. But we all work yeah. for it. We work for it every day. We put in extra hours, you know, morning and night. Um, anytime, anytime we we want to get in some work, we'll get in some work. Good job. All right, we'll go to Kiara. Kiara, go ahead and unmute yourself. I totally forgot my hand was raised because Jonathan definitely asked a question I was going to ask, but um, I guess I can go this way uh, to Diamia. Coach said he has been addressing racism um, amongst the team. Um, has that made you feel comfortable and? Um, you know, knowing that he is very welcoming in addressing those topics with you and, and honest and open about it. Um, yes, uh, you know, he he speaks about it daily, almost every day, and uh, he just gives us the opportunity to uh, speak out with any problems that we have, with any situation that's going on. So this right here was really a, a big issue. So it a lot of people to speak up, but uh, as far as him on it is it's wonderful because you know you you have somebody on your side for for any situation that was it thank you guys Thank thanks you. Kara. all right we'll move on to ross ross go ahead hey guys yeah i mean a question for all three y'all um kind of building on best receiver core in the nation what do you think about the offense and it's getting so much hype with sam at quarterback got all I think all returning wide receiver contributors and then the two top running backs the hype around the offense can you speak to that yeah um I would just say like there's definitely times like whenever we when we were here like previous years like whenever we didn't receive like any kind of hype and like all we could do is just put our head down and work. So like we're kind of in the point now where like we are receiving, like we are starting to get some love and we're starting to get some hype. But I mean, it's the same kind of situation, uh, whether it's good noise or bad noise uh, coming from people talking about us. I mean, like you got to block it out and do like nothing's going to happen unless we put the work in and make it actually happen. So that's that's kind of the situation we're in right now, especially coming from quarantine. So we're just like trying to stay humbled and and make sure that uh the people that are expecting to see something big actually get to see something big. Jazz, you want to chime in? What was the question again? Uh, just like how, how, much, how much hype's around the offense and how powerful it can be with the running backs, with the wide receivers, and Sam at quarterback. 
Like he said, we can't we can't really worry about that. We can't really worry about what we did last year. Like Galloway say all the time, last year don't matter. Yep. I think oh, yeah. Jazz, you froze up there. If you wanna, if you wanna run that back, I like I was saying. Um, Coach Galloway tell us all the time we can't worry about what we did last year. Last year don't really matter if we do nothing the next year. So we just got to keep pushing, keep working hard, and worry about the next year. Take one day at a time. Yeah. Uh, for me, there is no hype with the offense. You know, we we prove everything that we have to prove. Uh, we always been like an underdog type, but we work hard every day. You know, the running backs work hard, receiver core, offensive line, quarterback, even the defense, you know, outside of the offense. You know, we work collective as a, as a group, and then we just try to do our best every, every day. What else you got, Ross? That's it. Thank you. We'll go to Landon. Landon, go ahead. Oh, this is a question for um, all And I was just wondering, over the past year, in what ways has Coach Galloway involved in? Sorry, could you repeat that one more time? Uh, over, the, like, the past year, in what ways has Coach Galloway helped you all improve, improve like, individually for each one of you? I mean, there, there's a bunch of different nuances and small stuff that Galloway is always trying to work on with us, especially, I mean, like uh, a big, a big problem with us last year was uh, we had way too many drops as a, as a receiver core and myself individually. But um, I mean, like he's always given us new, new drills and stuff. He's always trying to find a way to make sure that we're working on, on like hand-eye coordination. He's always on our, he's always on our tail about making sure that we're in the, uh, in the indoor getting catches on the jugs machine and stuff. So, I mean, like he's, He's just always pushing us to make sure that we're we're trying to uh, get the best out of ourselves, and so um, he's he's been a really good um, good factor for us over this past year. Like um like both said, with catching the ball, he definitely helped me with catching the ball and me with me going to wanting to catch because he he it'd be at times where he'd be like. I just be walking around the building and he'll see me here, he'll ask me, You go catch balls today? And I say, nah, he'd be like, Why? And I had I had to go <laughs> go over there, go catch some balls. And obviously he said he, he would just put that fact in me. I'm going to make sure I'm going to make sure I catch balls every day. Uh yeah, uh, Galloway is like a, you know, he's like a fly. He's just flying around your head, buzzing in your ear. You know, he'll uh, tell you every single day you need to work on this, work on that. He'll uh, show us some, you know, some receivers that's in the league or some previous film uh, who he coached at other uh, at other schools. But, yeah, he, he'll, he'll get on us every day. Uh, so it's like you don't want him to say nothing to you, but, but he will. Even though you did it, like, you, you'll try to beat him to the punch so that he won't say nothing to you. But. We we really appreciate everything they do for us. Good landing. Oh, I had um, one follow up question. And Go ahead. What um what receiver do you all look up to in the league and kind of study to model your game after? Uh, for me, I'd say Amari Cooper. Um. It used to be for sure, without a doubt, Calvin Johnson. Like back back whenever he was playing, like Megatron was like definitely my idol, like as far as receivers goes. But uh, right now in the league, I say Amari. That's for me. Um, I look at guys like OBJ. I look at guys like Cooper Cup. Really, what's his name? Stephon Diggs. Really, guys who got who got a lot of shiftiness in their route. I'm just looking for words, looking to try to add more tools to my bag. And then really a guy that I like back in the day, a guy that I, I really love was Steve Smith. That's for like Steve Smith was a dog. Yami? For me, it'll be uh, Julio Jones and then, well, matter of fact, I have two. So it'll be Julio Jones, you know, as far as route run, 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 run running wise, and then, you know, the speed. And then it'll be Devontae Adams, you know. He's a uh, slept on receiver. He's an underdog, but... You, he had to 
pretty much like the best routes and releases in the game. Good stuff. Thanks, Landon. Pat, we'll come to you. Go ahead, Pat. Bro, you kind of touched on this on your answer uh, two questions ago, but for all of you guys, just kind of knowing what this offense could be capable of, knowing what this team could be capable of, just how much of a player was that working you know, while you're at home? And also for you guys to continue to try to be safe now that you're back and try to make sure that you know, there is a season. Like you, I, I heard the end of it, but I, I missed the middle part. Sorry about that. Just kind of uh, being at home and stuff, just kind of knowing what this team could be capable of this fall, just kind of how much of a motivator was that just, uh, you know, while you're at home and also now to make sure you're staying safe, make sure that there is a season in a sense. For sure. Um, I mean, it was a huge motivator. I mean, literally every single day uh, whenever I was back home, like I was thinking in my head, like, Okay, if I'm not working out today, I know my boys Diamis or Tuan, some, some like someone on the receiver core is working out today. Like, so shoot, I got to get my butt out of bed and, and go work out. And thankfully for me, um, I was back in Texas, so I was I was being sure to social distance over there. But uh, gyms were open and stuff, so I was able to work out with my trainer um, back home, and so I was I was getting some good work in throughout the week, um, and just. Like I said, like knowing knowing the the guys that I have in the receiver room with me, um, I knew it was going to be a competitive fall camp whenever we got back. So just knowing that I had something to work towards uh, definitely pushed me whenever I was back home. Um, being that you're at home, that gives you more time to think. So you definitely think about how good we can be. So that that definitely gives you motivation right there after rip to go do something. And now I'm being that we back, that just gives us more motivation not to get sick, not to, to try to stay away from try to stay away from people and try to stay away, try to stay in smaller spaces as we can to ourselves and try not to get any type of stuff that's going on. Uh, I know I was eager to come back. Uh, I, I was ready to go, uh, come back to campus and work out with the boys, but. Uh, home, I kind of had an advantage because I had Sam with me while I was there. So as far as like running routes and going over the plays, I, I had somebody with me. But uh, working out, it was just like home remedies type stuff. Uh, I had to do stuff on my own. But just just having somebody with me to work out with or just knowing that I, I have to like get better. We, I think we all as, as a group have one goal as of right now. And it's just to stay focused and hopefully we'll have a season of accomplishes goal that we all want. But yeah, that's it. Thank you. All right, we'll see if Andrew's got his audio problems fixed. Andrew? Nope. You can text me your question if you want. I can ask it for you. Come on. Text it or uh, put it in the chat. In the meantime, we'll go back to Kiera. Hey, so my question is for all of them. Um, can you just talk about the importance of social media and how you guys have been engaging with the new recruits, um, especially with the class of uh, 2021 and how excited they are to come and how you're kind of just bringing them into the brotherhood and um, just making them feel welcome to the team? Before you roll on that, I'll just chime in, make sure you all know you can't talk about anybody specifically. Guys, uh, I'm trying to get guys to um, – shoot, I'm, try, I'm trying to word this the right way now. You got me thinking, Jeremy. <laughs> but, um, I mean, just, like, keeping in touch with everybody, uh, making, making sure everybody feels welcome, welcome like you said. Um, I think everybody that's uh, joined UNC from a freshman to a – to the seniors on the team right now. I mean, one of the things about UNC is that when, whenever you commit to the team, like you, you become a part of a family, like a real family real quick. So um, uh, all those new guys, all the all the underclassmen and stuff are finding that out right now. Um, social media is important because, I mean, just like I was when I was in high school, I, I would love to see a person that was that I seen that I was playing on TV 
to hit me up and say, come here, come there. So, so I, I would just try, try to show the love back. And, of course, we want the best recruits. So I'm, I'm trying to gonna try to help get the best recruits for the best program in the country. Yeah. All right, they, they said it all. Uh, pretty much just, you know, build a bond with, with the recruits. So, you know, they always have like, – even if they don't want to come here enough, to, you know, get them advice because we've been through it already. So it's pretty much their little brothers to us anyway. So this and then social media, we can't, it's easy to reach out through social media, you know, so it, it's just something easy for us. Good. We'll flip to, to Greg. Greg, go ahead. Yeah, this is for uh, Niami. Just one question. You guys had some incredible catches last year. Uh, we talked with you, know, Coach Galloway, the other day. There's also some some drops that seem like rather simple catches compared to some of the tough ones you made. What what's the key in kind of you know, uh, handling that this year? Kind of eliminating those some of those drops and what led to some of those issues last year? Yeah. So last year I, I pretty much figured it out. So. Last year, I was, it was pretty much a lack of concentration, you know, and focusing on the ball. So that's something I've been working on the whole offseason. I pretty much run, run routes till I get tired. And then when I'm tired, I try to catch the ball every time, focus in, concentrate, you know, catch the ball with my eyes, you know, and just instead of just my hands, catch the hand, catch ball with my eyes and my hands at the same time. That's something that I've been working on. Anything more of that, Greg? Uh, well, I wanted to get Daz's response too, but Diami, while well, well, I got you, um, was is it a is it a matter of almost overconfidence, thinking, oh, I've got this for sure, and looking upfield or that that kind of thing? Yeah, most most of it is, you know, I I ran a good route, and then okay, I know I know what I'm gonna do after, you know, when I catch it. So it's a catch before it's a run before catch type, you know. I always think like, what, what you know, before I catch the ball. So that's something I've just been trying to. Guys, you want to chime in? I'm like Yami was saying, it's just a lack of focus. I mean, sometimes you got, you know, you being lack to days ago, you thinking you, you got this catch easy, drop, not concentrating on the ball. And then you got other times where you thinking about running after the catch, another drop, because you ain't focused on the ball. So we just got to make sure, like Yami said, catch the ball with our ass. Make sure you focus on the ball every time. Focus it always to the top. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll flip back to Ross. Ross, go ahead. This question is from Inside Carolina intern Gregory Hall to Bo. Uh, what can you tell us about Emory Simmons and what he can bring this season and how he's developed after one year uh, at UNC and what we can expect from Emory? Man, Emory definitely gets um... – What's the uh, what's the award for like most most improved or yeah? But I mean Emory, I mean Emory's just always putting in the work, man. I mean he's just he's always been there with us uh, since he got on campus. Uh, he used to have the nickname Bambi because he, uh, he looked like Bambi out on the field for a little bit. But I mean he's def he got rid of the nickname. He's been uh, working hard in the weight room, man, and uh, uh, you can definitely expect big things from Emory this year. And then I shoot over to Diami as well. I mean, what kind of receiver is Emory? What, what can we expect in, in terms of what he brings to the football field? So the, pretty much, you know, he, he has the speed, the agility, you know. He has great hands, and he can run good routes. And something that we didn't see last year was the confidence that he had. So, so what he built off this uh, for, from off last year was the confidence, you know, and, and he's, he's feeling good about it. So that's what he'll bring. <laughs> 